Happy you could come along. We are joined, as always, by Greg Engert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group. The group includes Vermilion and Columbia Firehouse in Old Town. Uh, also in the Del Rey neighborhood, you've got Planet Wine and Evening Star Cafe. I should mention Greg is a James Beard Award nominee. It is always good to see you. Good to see you, too. What's on tap this week? This week, um, we have the final um, backstage series release from Founders Brewing Company mm -hmm. for 2014. These are always uh, heavily anticipated, uh, highly anticipated, I should say. Um, and it's called Big Luscious, with a, a fun play on uh, Luscious, L-U-S-H, um, perhaps referring to uh, a Lush, um, which we aren't, of course. Um, and uh, this is a 7.9% balanced, um, rich, roasty stout that's got a big, huge, silky mouthfeel, brewed with chocolate uh, and with raspberries. Um, so it's a uh, ho 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 decadent holiday beer. Ooh, mommy, that smells nice. Mm. Oh wow, that's good. <laughs> oh gee, chocolate covered raspberries. Oh boy, but so much better in a it's, glass. It's great. It's like. There's no acidity. It's got that full yep. layered flavor of like raspberry, almost vanilla. But see how that the roast character is so supple without being dry at all. And it's not sweet, but it's rich on the palate, silky, full bodied, luscious, as it's so called. Um, it's, a, it's a hell of a beer. I, I'm constantly impressed at how they manage the levels uh, of the flavors because if I tried to make this, it would either come out tasting like chocolate milk right. or a cherry Slurpee from yep, 7-Eleven. Exactly. But the, the, the perfect balance. balance. Yep. Well, that's what they do. I mean, you know, <laughs> that is, that's what they do. That's and the cool why we thing, buy it. The cool thing is, there's like a lot of different threads going on here. Obviously, Founders has been known for big, bold imperial styles for years. Their regular imperial style is incredible, and this almost reminds me of the base of that. And then they have Kentucky Breakfast Stout. Uh, you know, right. uh, obviously that's aged in bourbon barrels, but also has chocolate and, and coffee in it. Uh, and then, you know, they've been doing work with raspberries. Rubeus is the beer that they brew for the summertime. It's a big, huge raspberry beer, but one of my favorite beers of all time from Founders was a previous backstage series beer called Blushing Monk, which is just a huge uh, Belgian raspberry beer that was absolutely delicious. So you kind of see, you know, you got the chocolate uh, incorporation you get from KBS, you've got the raspberry Blushing Monk, and then all tied together in this silky, uh, rich stout. It's incredible. I'm trying to remember the founders. I, the, I've aged founders for a year, and I, it, I think it was some sort of barrel-aged stout. It had this old, spooky-looking miner guy on it. I can't oh, remember. Oh, Backwoods name, Bastard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I aged so that for a year. Great. It's delicious. That's the, I mean, they make great beer. That's their, um, their Scottish ale, like strong um, Scotch ale uh, aged in bourbon barrels. It's, it's delicious. Gone. It just came out, yeah. No more um, left of that batch. Great stuff. For me. Uh, obviously, you, you know, you, you think about desserts, but, but, but what else would you pair with this with? On the savory side. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's desserty, that's for sure, and delicious. But uh, I can see doing this, honestly, with um, some just like standard meat and bean chili. I think it would be awesome. You've got that chocolate roasty richness going in with the, the richness of the chili itself. And I think that the fruit component would work um, to that. And, you know, we were talking last week about the um, Nancy, that tart cherry beer from Allagash, working well with a kind of Carolina pulled pork barbecue based on the acidity. With this one, I'm thinking raspberry, I'm thinking dark, rich fruit, a little bit of sweetness, maybe Texas barbecue. You know, um, beef based barbecue with uh, a tomato based sauce. I think it would be fantastic with this. I think of this with like ribs, almost has like a kind of, um, you know, uh, a raspberry barbecue kind of glaze to it um, that would work really nice with. Um, with ribs as well. Uh, I love throwing you these big open-ended general questions, but 2015 is only a matter of days away. Are there anything, uh, trends in the craft beer industry you're looking for in 2015 or just uh, more of the same, which has been good? Um, <laughs> I love that. I asked the craft it's, uh, Yeah, it's uh, interesting to, to think what, I think, of course, the funny thing about those questions is it's not like, any, well, actually, I was about to say it's not like the the calendar date would affect like whether somebody's going right, to start innovating true. or not. But excellent, actually, but actually, point. it is true. They do because I mean I don't know if everybody knows this. Like breweries do plan out 2015. So most breweries right now know they're ordering uh, hops. They're, they're, yeah, they're, and they know like yeah. what some of their big like like founders, for instance. I guarantee they have most of their backstage series releases planned for next year, right now. Um, so. 
it, it, that would be interesting to know what they plan on doing there. Um, but I think, you know, you're going to keep seeing sours. You're going to see barrel aging increase, increase, increase. Um, I think that uh, you're going to continue to see that session trend uh, happening, the lower ABV beers, um, and you're going to see more and more releases over time. And I think another thing you're definitely going to see is um, price increase. I think that beers are increasingly more expensive. I think that um, the consumer needs to realize that this is not just based on like a retailer making more or a distributor or a brewer, but altogether, um, ingredients are expensive, um, but scarcity uh, breeds desire and supply and demand takes over. So the more and more people are drinking this stuff, the less and less is available. And I think that you're gonna see some, uh, some, some price increases to go along with that. Well, this marks our third anniversary for Beer of the Week, so cheers to Beer of the Week and Happy New Year Happy to New Year. everyone as well. We will look forward to continuing to sample uh, some amazing beers. Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another Beer of the Week.